Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In the last one we made a procedural book, so if you haven't seen that make sure to go watch that. But in this part we're going to take that procedural book and randomize it and put them in kind of a bookshelf kind of order. So you can see uh, each book has a different height, different width, different curvature of the cover, yet they all fit perfectly together. So we're going to be using simulation notes to do this, which is kind of an interesting approach. Um, but I'm trying to find our previous project. Uh, but where we left off is right here with a single uh, book. I don't know why there's any keyframes. Again, uh, this book has a curvature we can control of the cover. We can control the length of it, the margin of the pages, so the gap between the cover and the pages, page count, height, and the cover thickness. We want to randomize all these and put them side by side by side. So uh, to do this, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use simulation nodes. Make sure you have 3.5 or above. And basically, the way I want you to think about this is simulation nodes is going to be a loop where each time we're going to add a book. So we have a book here, and then we're going to say, where's the leftmost point? It's going to be right here, and then we're going to add a book. Then we're going to look at the stack of two books. What is the leftmost point? Add a book. And then each time, this gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? So to put this simply, uh, what we can do is for each iteration, we I keep doing this join strings. I tried recording this tutorial one time actually two times uh, before this. I keep doing join strings. So we're going to join geometry with the book. So each iteration, we're adding a book. So we're going to start off with nothing, and then we're adding books. And you can see right here on the vertex count, this is increasing with each frame we go up because it's adding a book on top of itself over and over and over again. You can't see this because it's perfectly overlapping. What I want to do is I want to offset it each time. So what I described before, where we're looking at all the books and seeing the leftmost point, can be described by the bounding box of this. So for each iteration, we're going to look at the bounding box. We're going to look at the leftmost point, which is the maximum, where x, where x is the largest. I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to multiply it by 1, 0, 0. This is going to make it so it's isolating the x component and um, making y and z equal to 0, meaning each time if we add a book with this transform, it's not going to be perfect yet, uh, but what you're going to see is now this book is kind of being offset each time. So we have a book, we look at the leftmost point, add another, and add another, and add another. Now the reason this isn't working uh, perfectly is the book itself uh, was not centered, or sorry, it was centered, right? It's uh, perfectly centered here. Uh, we want it to be kind of like hanging on the y-axis, so it should be over here instead of centered, uh, but we can do a fix for this. So again, it's going to the leftmost point, but then it's putting a book right in the middle. So half of it's in, half of it's out. Uh, we can do the same kind of calculation. So we're going to take the bounding box of the book. We are going to look at the maximum x component, and then all we have to do is we want both of these to contribute. So I'm going to add these components. So let's see what this gives us. Well, it gives us nothing because we are not uh, viewing the output. There we go. Now you can see each book is perfectly flush with the next one. Um, if I was to make this like 1.2, what do you expect to happen? Now there's going to be a tiny bit of a gap. And I guess there is an argument for that, uh, just so you can kind of tell where one book ends and the next one begins. Otherwise, they're perfectly touching. Um, but there you go. So again, this is the bounding box of the book. Here's our book, here's our bounding box, and it's going to look at the leftmost point. And it's going to do that for the stack each time. Uh, in fact, what we can do, just so you can see kind of the idea here, is every iteration we're going to have more books, so the bounding box is going to change, and we're looking at the leftmost point. So it's going to add a book here, and here, and here, and here. Okay? So now really the name of the game is instead of doing it like this, we want to randomize these on each frame. So what we can do is we can literally randomize it with a random value. So the curvature, for example, is uh, you know how much curve there is in the cover. It shouldn't go less than 0, and it shouldn't go more than 0.1. So I'm going to connect these to the curvature. And uh, for the ID, I'm going to use the frame number. So each frame, it's going to get a different kind of, not a seed, because it's literally controlled here, uh, but it's going to get a different ID or a different generation uh, each time. So let's actually try to view that. I don't know why there's keyframes here. So this is going to be a little hard to tell. Maybe I should um, make this more extreme, 0 to 1. So you can see some books are perfect, or not perfectly, they're curved too much. 
Uh, they're curved a lot, some of them a little, and you can see there's some variation here, okay? Not the most obvious one, but really I want it from 0 to 0 0.5. No, that's too much. I just don't want the book to break. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're getting different curvature for our books. Um, to make it a bit more obvious, let's mess with the length. Again, the length of the book is this. So I want to take the length, randomize it from, well, originally it was at 2. So let's go from 1.5 to 4. Again, using the frame. And just with that, whoops, now you can see it's randomizing at each frame. Uh, I want to look at the accumulation of these. And now we have randomized uh, books like this. I think one thing we could do is we could have them flush instead of on here. We could have them flush here because that's kind of how you'd put it in a bookshelf. So I'm thinking, should we make the Y component equal to one? Let's see what that does. That does not do what I would expect it to do. Interesting. Um, don't really know about that. Either way, we, we can randomize that as well. Um, so, what happens if we make this equal to 1? Whoa, that is not what we want. Okay, so we're going to keep randomizing these, and then we'll take care of that issue. So for the margin, this is the cover to page ratio. It shouldn't really go uh, below kind of like 8% off, so 92% to 1. Connect that to the margin, and I'm just going to keep going here. Uh, for the page count, we have it set to 0.58 by default. Let's have it go from very thin to very thick. And let's see what all of this looks like. So now we're getting randomization about how thick the book is. And we have some very thin ones, and you can see they all fit perfectly. And now where it's really going to be very visually distinctive is with the height. So we're going to go from 3 up to 6. And I'm actually not going to randomize the uh, cover. I think it's fine the way it is. So... Here you can see we're getting a stack of books. Uh, to make them like not perfect, uh, in a sense, is what we can do is we can transform and maybe let's add a bit of randomness. So I'm going to random value a vector where we only care about the y component. So x and z are going from 0 to 0, but y is going from 0 to 1. We can make this dependent on the frame again. And let's see what this looks like. We add this, so each time it should have a bit of a random transform. And now you can see these books are kind of jutting out some of them. So that's a nice quick fix. And really, it's going to keep going until, you know, you tell it to stop. It's going to add one to each and every single frame. And what you can do is you can do multiple generations of these to get kind of like one shelf of the bookshelf, a second shelf of the bookshelf, etc., uh, but you can see the core idea behind this tutorial is how do we take a node group that we made, randomize it, and do a bounding box calculation so we know where is the leftmost point, etc. And you could get fancy here, and you could actually distribute them in a circle, uh, which would be much harder to do, but you could do it. might even want to use the accumulate field node for that. And let's see what this looks like in rendered mode, because that's where it's going to look sick. 